cloud projects. If you spend any amount of time going through the internet looking at different things that you can do in order to help your journey into the cloud industry, you're going to come across advice that recommends that you get hands-on and you start to build real-world projects. So in this video, I want to dive into exactly that and give you some real examples of different things that you can build for cloud projects. Now, the first type of project that I would recommend for you is what I would call more of a traditional type of architecture. Now, I say traditional because really this takes a lot of ideas that come from the sort of on-premise world and have moved into the cloud and these are really sort of staples or things that you should look into when you get into the cloud. What does that mean in practice? Taking an instance or something like an EC2 web instance and deploying that into your own custom built network. Now in different clouds, for instance in AWS, you'll actually get some predefined networks for you already created. What I would say is don't use those, actually build the network itself from scratch and deploy your instance into a custom created network. What that will do is it will force you to think about things like subnets, IP addresses, you'll have to create your own VPC, and all of these different networking areas are really good areas to look into when you're building a cloud project. Okay, so let's take an example and have a look at this WordPress hosting one on AWS. You've got sort of the VPC surrounding all of your different resources. You've got this dotted orange line, which is your availability zones. Then you've also got the black parts, which are the subnets. So some of those are public, some of those are private. There's other some interesting bits in here as well. You'll see in the faded out gray bit, there's also this aspect of a bastion host. Now, it's a very common technique that companies use in order to provide access to a private network. What you can do once you've got your network set up is then put your instance into that. Now, you could take the example of a website Server. So imagine this whole architecture is building sort of a website or an e-commerce application. If you want a simple way to deploy a web server, you can also use some of the images that come predefined in the Amazon marketplace. You can use an AMI, for instance, for something like WordPress, which will allow you to simply create a website that you can deploy directly into your network. One thing that you can start to think about is how you could hook up things like a domain name. So you can use services like Route 53 and you can use ACM to also apply a certificate so that you can have a secure domain, something like yourwebsite.com that's pointing to that example website. Server. Let's move on to project two, which I'll probably call sort of a decoupled web application. Now, this is also a very conventional type of architecture that you'll see out there in the real world. So you have a front-end side of, of your site, which is deployed in a static fashion. And then you have a back-end site, which is usually driven through APIs. And those two parts will communicate with each other, but they're actually built entirely separately. Now, if you're not familiar with the Cloud Resume Challenge, the project is a, just a way to build a resume using different cloud services. And the architecture was very much this decoupled front-end, back-end type of application where you had static assets served as S3 and then back-end APIs built out on top of AWS Lambda and DynamoDB. Now, the project has evolved. There are different ways that you can build the Cloud Resume Challenge in Azure, in GCP, and in AWS. Now, once you've got that architecture actually up and running, you could, if you wanted to, actually start to dive into some specifics here. You could look at some different web frameworks. You could look at React or Angular or Svelte. Or on the back-end side, you can then start to look into things like REST and RESTful services and what that actually means for APIs. Eyes. Now, let's talk about project number three, which is actually building a Kubernetes API. We talked about in the last one having a sort of a front end and a back end API. You could take that API and port it also into a Kubernetes back end. With Kubernetes, you're going to get a little bit closer with technology like container technology, such as Docker, as opposed to sort of serverless technology like AWS Lambda. So I've got an example diagram here that would show you how this sort of architecture would work in practice. What you've got here is very similar to what we talked about before. You've got your Amazon VPC wrapping all of your different resources. You've got a load balancer, which then hands off to uh, Amazon EKS, which is the Kubernetes service within Amazon. And then you've got your services within that. But what's cool about this diagram as well is it also shows you at the bottom side, you've got the different CI CD pipeline using things like code commit, code build, and Amazon ECR. If you haven't got a project with any CI CD components to it, I would recommend that you probably look look into adding that into one of your different projects. And you can even complement this with a certification training. There are two different types of certifications for Kubernetes or two of the bigger ones. You could maybe look at the administrator exam, or if you're looking at more of a software engineer, you could look at the developer exam as just a way to solidify your learning in Kubernetes. Now, the fourth project that I think you could build is an event-driven service using something like AWS Lambda. Now, events are quite different in terms of architecture to the things that we've talked about already. Events are typically associated with what is known as an asynchronous type of architecture. Now, to take a more concrete example of what you could build is really an upload image service. How it work is you would upload an image to a Lambda function through an API gateway, and that would then get 
stored in somewhere like S3. What you could do then is asynchronously process that image by listening to the S3 file event that would take in the image as an input and store different sized images back in S3. If you want, you could also look at different services like step functions, which allows you to build and orchestrate different workflows around the serverless architectures. If you want to take this project further, CICD will definitely help. Monitoring as well will also help. Okay, so project number five would be to build out a multiple AWS account architecture. Now, everything that we've talked about up until this point was talking more about sort of application architecture. If you want to become sort of a hardcore cloud engineer, you will often be operating in a big complex organization that has multiple different business units and different rules. Now, how you separate that in an AWS world is actually by building different AWS accounts. Okay, so it comes to giving you a concrete example. You might have accounts that are used just for your log infrastructure, or you might have a security account account as well that would be used only by an administrator or by someone with privileged access. Now there's a whole bunch of material online about the best practices here about using different accounts for different purposes. It's having things like a per environment AWS account structure where you have your pre-production environments and your production environments separated. Okay so there you have it five different projects that you can think about when you're trying to get into the cloud industry. Don't forget these projects are going to be tough so remember to stick with them and start to really think about how you can build additional complexity. Let's say if you're a cloud engineer you might want to focus more on the traditional architecture and maybe the multiple AWS account infrastructure. Or if you're leaning more onto the developer side, maybe the front end, back end type of architecture, maybe with a specialism either on front end or on back end. So I really hope that gave you some real world examples of things that you can build for different cloud projects. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.